So this is just a quick little video of my Derrick crane, or some people might call it a gin pole, but it's more of a masked Derrick crane, and uh, how it's configured. It's lifting capability, simple to build, easy to move. Um, it's taken all the weight I've put on it, and we've done a few tests. I can carry it by myself, although it's a little awkward, but it's, it's not that heavy even in its components. So uh, if you're building something or you need to move something or you want uh, a crane you can just attach to a tree, you might want to think about this, that's all. So here we go. So the lifting and slewing is composed of sailboat winches, two speeds, um, easy control. They pop out of receivers so you can fit it into the back of your truck or whatever, there's a square tube inside. The bottom ones are bolted in just to keep them tucked in a little tighter. And this whole assembly is tied in down below to the pivot point to be very critical of not putting any side load into the actual mass. So it is a pure compression post. So these, there's no load on them. And even when you're lifting something, you can check and make sure that you're not kinking or twisting. It's very important that there's no damage, dents, side loading to the actual mast itself or the boom itself pardon me and uh, so this is your main lifting line that's for lifting and raising the boom that is for slewing to the right and this will be your slewing left winch and obviously you've got to loosen off this one to tighten up this one to slew it back and forth and uh, we'll take a quick look at the pivots and how it's reeved but uh, Geez, you can lift a lot of weight with this thing and it doesn't weigh much. I don't think this weighs a hundred pounds. It's just one eighth of an inch thick. Yeah, let's take a look. So the connection point to the tree is a bracket assembly I built for actually connecting. It's just got a receiver, like a truck receiver, square tubing so that you can clamp this onto a tree in its V-block configuration with uh, ratchet straps, truck straps. And that allows you to attach the pivot point to the tree easily, to any tree quickly. And it is held up at this end by a chain that goes to a come along that's choked onto the tree. And that takes most of the actual weight that the pivot point sees at the bottom of the boom. So the bottom of the boom assembly articulates on basically a universal joint type pivot. You've got this shaft through here, which allows the boom to pivot up and down. And you have another one in here, which allows it to pivot in the receiver hitch. Here is just a better look at the uh, articulation joint of the bottom of the boom. Pretty straightforward. Here you can see the lower, the slewing winch and it's cleating assembly here for tying it off. It would have been nice to go with self tailing winches, although I feel more comfortable with the cleats. Um, it does take two handed operation, but these are cheap, cheap winches bought used where the self tailing are not so much. Here's the boom in the lowered position. Uh, it's easy to move up and down. The boom is 1 8 wall, 8 inch diameter, 6061 T6 aluminum. It doesn't weigh a lot. And uh, let's go up and take a look at the top of the boom. Here is the uh, upper part of the boom. There's your up haul, your boom lift. It's got a two-part reeve in the block and your slew lines, pretty simple. These are rollerized and greased, but not too complicated. One thing to keep in mind, it is quite important to keep your anchoring points for the slewing lines 
on the same plane as your pivot point for the boom. And that way when you raise and lower your boom, it doesn't get tighter and looser as you go up and down. Otherwise, you're constantly adjusting your slewing lines as they cinch up in the up or down position depending on how you've connected them. Being that this boom has only strength as a compression post, it is ultra critical that no damage or dents of any kind happen to this boom, or its structural ability as a compression post will be significantly reduced. So keeping an eye on it, making sure that no branches have dented it, and nobody's put a dent in it somewhere is, is ultra critical. This is the boom lift winch. It fits in a receiver the same as the uphaul winch does. And running cleats on here allows me, when I remove this winch, to use it in a different location, possibly attached to a truck or a car or a receiver hitch or wherever it's going to be utilized. It, uh, it can cleat off and it's tied into itself, where the slewing winches are bolted in and the cleat is part of the main structure. And so here's a bit of a solution too. Now, the winches are two-speed winches, so you got that going in your favor. Sometimes I run it with a drill. I can't really demonstrate it now because I've hurt my shoulder and can't film at the same time that I do the video. But this is a whole hog, Milwaukee corded, really slow drill. It's also two-speed and bi-directional. So you got four speeds now and you don't have to do any physical work. It is a little awkward using the drill and self-tailing the winches, but you can do it if you do it three feet at a time sort of thing and then re-grab the rope. Yeah, it saves some time. If you're going up and down with it quite a bit, it pays off. Otherwise, the hand crank is really not that much work. And if you have no weight on the boom and you're just maneuvering it, you don't have to use the winch handle. You can just pull the rope around the windlass drum and it'll pull itself up, no problem. So here we'll do a little demo, I guess. Not that it really matters, but so you can see it's a little awkward to getting everything, but. And then if you do the direction change. A little bit too fast for my liking, but. As long as you got no load on it. And that's in the slow speed, going forward and reverse, using the two speed of the actual windlass drum. The high speed on here, it's way too fast. It's out of the control fast. But the boom is light enough that by itself, you can just pull it up. And it's not that bad. And to clean it off, There you go. One more thing to keep in mind, it's good to have a swivel on your hook and it's important that you have enough weight on your hook or your block to be able to pull all the rope up the boom. Otherwise, when you pull your hook to the top of the boom, it won't have enough weight to pull all the rope up the boom and bring the hook back down to the ground. And the more you reeve it, the more the block's going to have to weigh to compensate for that. So, like most of the things around here, there's no safety features. You don't want to use it if you're absent-minded. You kind of have to be mechanically inclined. It's easy to make a mistake or forget something. So, uh, you really want to keep your eyes on the ball. And maybe not lend it out to people who are a little more absent-minded. And the shower and the bathroom are in position. 
it's just got to lift the roof on, put in the columns, and we can finish taking it to where it's got to go. And it's all hanging on the crane for the night. And tomorrow morning we will get back at it.